Ever had that sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach when you look at your bank account balance? Does the sight of bills give you cold sweats? Maybe you've been telling yourself, I'm just a little broke right now. But what if I told you being broke might actually be being poor? What if I told you it's high time we face our financial dragons head on? Welcome to today's video where we will uncover the 10 telltale signs that you have transitioned from broke to poor. Why should you stick around? Well, identifying these signs is like diagnosing a disease. The earlier you catch it, the better your chances of recovery. And I promise, by the end of this video, you'll be equipped with the knowledge to understand your financial health and the first steps to reclaim it. Ready? Let's plunge into the world of numbers and reality. Now let's dive straight into our first sign, when recurring bills become your own personal version of a horror movie. Remember when you were merely broke and saw bills as momentary inconveniences, just speed bumps on the way to payday? Well, if you have transitioned from being broke to being poor, those bills suddenly look like insurmountable mountains. You might find yourself dreading the mailman's visits or nervously checking your emails, knowing there might be a pending bill lurking, ready to ambush your shaky bank balance. There's a sinking feeling in your stomach every time you have to pay for utilities, rent, or even groceries. And let's not even start on unexpected expenses. They're like plot twists in this financial thriller you didn't sign up for. Suddenly, basic necessities feel like luxury splurges. If you're nodding along right now, chances are you have made the unfortunate shift from being broke to being poor. Now onto our second sign. Ever heard the phrase, a penny save is a penny earned? Well, if you're thinking, savings, what's that? It might be a sign you've shifted from just being broke to being poor. Yes, you heard that right. When you're broke, it's often a temporary situation. You might not have much, but you strive to save a little for those rainy days. Now imagine this, instead of planning for those rainy days, every day feels like a stormy day. If your income comes in and goes out without ever sitting comfortably in a savings account, then we have an issue, my friends. Saving is not just about stashing away mountains of cash. It's about building a safety net. It's a crucial habit that sets the stage for financial stability and success. You see, not having a saving plan is like trying to drive across the country with no spare tire. Sure, you might get lucky, but what happens when you hit that first big pothole? Time to test your financial knowledge with a quick trivia question. Did you know that according to a 2020 Federal Reserve report, what percentage of Americans wouldn't be able to cover a $400 emergency expense without borrowing money or selling something? Is it A, 25% B, 35% or C, 45%? Think about it, and we'll reveal the answer in just a moment. Okay, ready for the answer? According to the Fed's report, a surprising 37% of Americans are so cash-strapped that a sudden $400 expense would throw their finances into chaos. That's right, a staggering number of people are living on the edge, highlighting the importance of savings. This is a wake-up call for us to prioritize creating a buffer in our finances. Now, let's continue. Now being broke might mean you have a few debts here and there, student loans, maybe a car payment. But when you're poor, debt takes on a whole new persona it's like that unwelcome house guest who's overstayed, and you just can't seem to get rid of them. You find yourself sinking deeper into the quicksand of debt, struggling to keep your nose above the surface as interest mounts and payments grow increasingly unmanageable. According to a study by the Pew Charitable Trusts, 8 in 10 Americans have debt, with mortgages being the most common liability. But when you're poor, it's the high-interest consumer debt, like credit card debt or payday loans, that tends to become the norm, not the exception. This is a glaring sign that you've transitioned from being just broke to being truly poor. Stay tuned to find out if this rings true for you and remember, identifying the problem is the first step towards crafting a solution. After all, as the famous Chinese saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So don't get discouraged, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Well, folks, we're on to sign number four now, and this one hits closer to home than you might think. It's when cutting corners becomes more than a thrifty trait. Instead, it evolves into an absolute necessity, a way of life. Picture this, you're in your favorite grocery store and you find yourself calculating the price per gram of every item you pick up. You started replacing fresh fruits with canned ones and you've somehow convinced yourself that instant ramen is a perfectly fine substitute for a home-cooked meal every once in a while. Does this sound familiar? It's because you're constantly seeking cheaper alternatives and, in the process, compromising on the quality of your life. Thrifting isn't a bad thing, not at all. But when your financial situation demands you to replace every little joy in life with its less satisfying, cheaper counterpart, it's a red flag. Not only does this diminish your overall quality of life, but it can also impact your health and happiness in the long run. 
This isn't being frugal, this is a sign that broke has packed its bags and left, and poor has set up camp. Next time you're out shopping, be mindful, are you making a choice, or are you being cornered by your financial circumstances? If you find this video eye-opening, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description box for valuable resources. Now let's dive into our fifth sign, the absence of health insurance or a retirement plan. You know, health and wealth often go hand in hand, and one major medical event without insurance can completely wipe out your finances. And if you think, well, I'm young and healthy, I don't need it, remember, unexpected health crises don't discriminate by age. Statistics show that around 137 million Americans faced financial hardship due to medical costs in 2019. That's staggering, isn't it? And what about retirement? Are we looking into the future? The lack of a retirement plan signals a paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck lifestyle, where long-term financial security isn't just overlooked, it's practically inconceivable. Retirement isn't about age, it's about financial freedom. And without a plan, you may find yourself working way past the golden years just to make ends meet. Trust me, you don't want your 70-year-old self to still worry about bills, do you? So a friendly reminder here, securing health and wealth is paramount. Are you ever left staring at the calendar, counting the days till your next paycheck, while your bank account runs on fumes? If you started timing your expenses to your pay cycle rather than your needs or wants, you might be experiencing sign number six, living paycheck to paycheck. Now, we're not talking about the occasional end of month penny pinching here. We're talking about a regular, heart racing cycle where your paycheck evaporates the moment it hits the bank, leaving you scrambling to cover your needs until the next payday rolls around. According to a survey by the American Payroll Association, nearly 74% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. You heard it right, almost three out of four. It's a disturbing reality that strikes a chord of similarity among a large population. Now, being broke may mean you're out of cash by month and a few times, but being poor? It's a systemic issue where this cycle is not just a bad month phenomenon, but an unwelcome lifestyle. If you're recognizing this pattern, don't fret. You're not alone. Does the mere mention of finance, bills, or budgets get you cringing or suddenly have you fascinated with watching paint dry? It's funny, yet it's not. Avoiding financial conversations is a clear sign you've moved from just being broke to being poor. It's like playing hide-and-seek with your bank account. It's not as fun as it sounds, and unfortunately, it doesn't resolve the problems. Now, I get it. Talking about money isn't exactly the easiest thing. We've all been there, where we'd rather endure a dentist appointment than discuss our finances. But if you find yourself consistently dodging these conversations or conveniently forgetting about that friend who always talks about investments, it's time for a reality check. Avoidance won't turn those pennies into a pile of cash. Education and action will. So brace yourself, grab that finance book, or call up that annoyingly money-smart friend. Your future self will thank you for it. Now, this is where things start to get real. Sign number eight is a significant one, a lack of financial literacy. Yes, that's right. Not understanding financial basics can be like trying to drive with a blindfold. It's not just about balancing your checkbook or making ends meet. It's about understanding how money works, how it grows, and how you can make it work for you. Let's face it, there's no class in high school or even in most universities that teach you about managing your personal finance, investing, understanding interest rates, creating a balanced budget, the magic of compounding. It all sounds like Greek, if you haven't got a clue. According to a study by the National Financial Educators Council, the average American loses about $1,634 each year due to lacking knowledge about personal finances. That's a grand vacation you're missing out on, or perhaps it could be the seed money for your new business. So if you're consistently baffled by your financial situation, it might not just be about your income. It's about how well you understand and manage that income. Does the thought of an unexpected car repair make you break out in a cold sweat? Can a sudden medical bill turn your monthly budget into a full-blown disaster movie? Well, you're not alone. According to a study by Bankrate, nearly 28% of US adults have no emergency savings at all. Yes, that's right. Zero zilch nada. That's a clear sign of transitioning from just being broke to being poor. When you're broke, an unexpected expense might ruin your month. But when you're poor, it could upend your whole life. Building an emergency fund is like erecting a financial safety net. It's there to catch you when life throws a curveball. But when there's no safety net, every small mishap feels like a free fall. It's like walking down a tightrope without a safety harness. Sounds nerve-wracking, right? Not having an emergency fund is like that. It puts you one emergency away from financial ruin. So if the mere thought of an emergency sends chills down your spine, it's time to take action. 
And remember, building an emergency fund is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes consistency and discipline, but it's worth every penny. Our 10th and final sign, a growing addiction to plastic money, also known as your credit cards. Does your heart rate spike when you see a credit card machine at the checkout counter? Do you find yourself swiping that little rectangle more often than you'd like to admit, telling yourself it's just temporary? If your wallet is bursting at the seams with credit cards, each one maxed out to its limit, you might be tiptoeing dangerously close to the line between broke and poor. Recent studies show that credit card debt in America has skyrocketed, with the average household owing approximately $6,270. High interest rates associated with these cards can quickly push you into a perpetual debt cycle. Now there's nothing wrong with using credit cards, they can be fantastic financial tools if used wisely, but when they become your primary method of making ends meet, it's akin to using a band-aid for a fracture. It's a sign you need to reevaluate your financial health before it goes critical. And there we have it, 10 signs that you might have transitioned from just being broke to falling into the category of being poor. Now remember, this isn't a doom and gloom prognosis. In fact, acknowledging these signs is actually your first victory. It's like turning on the GPS when you're lost. Knowing where you stand is the starting point to charting a new course. By recognizing these patterns, you're already one step closer to financial improvement. And remember, change doesn't happen overnight, so don't be too hard on yourself. Start small, stay consistent, and let's embark on this journey to financial health together. We've got more insights, advice, and financial wisdom packed in our other videos. So, why wait? Go ahead and explore. Let's transform these signs of poverty into symbols of growth and